today I'm going to show you how to replace the radiator and condenser fans on 94 to 97 Accords. So the complaint was a strange rattling sound when the AC is running. Hopefully you can hear that. Now I'll turn the AC off. Now I've already diagnosed this so I'm just going to explain what I did so I don't have to shout over the engine. First thing I did is I listened around here around the AC compressor itself because if a bearing's bad in the accessory drive belt system like the AC clutch pulley or an idler pulley. This vehicle doesn't have idler pulleys, but if it did, it could be that because as you load a failing bearing, it can make more noise. And the load in this case is the compressor clutch engaging. But I listened here and it didn't sound like it was coming from this area. It sounded like it was coming from this area, from the front area of the engine. So what I started suspecting was the radiator fans. Now to see if it was the fans or the engine, I wanted to run both these fans with the engine off. So what you can do on these vehicles is if your AC is working, in other words, if it has a proper amount of refrigerant in it, you can turn the key to the on position and turn the blower on and hit the AC button and both of these fans should run. Key's on, now I'm turning on the AC. So as you can clearly hear there, the engine wasn't running and the noise is still there, so I know one of the radiator fans is the culprit. Now this may not work if your AC system doesn't have any refrigerant in it. In other words, if you have a leak and all your refrigerants leaked out, there's a low pressure switch that trips to protect the compressor. In that case, the PCM may not turn on these fans when you do what I just did. So what you can do then is go back here, see that green connector there, pop that out, turn the key to the on position and jumper those two wires and that will make both cooling fans run. Now what's most likely wrong here is the bearing in one of these fans is bad. The easiest way to test them is just spin the blades but before you do that a word of warning some vehicles can turn on the fans even while the key is off so you want to either disconnect the negative battery terminal, disconnect the connector to the fan you're testing or go to the fuse box and pull the fuser relay for that fan. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull the connector on the fan. I'll start with the radiator fan. The connector for this fan is down low under this coolant overflow bottle. It just pulls out. And right down there you'll see that two pin connector. I'm just going to disconnect that. As you can see the back of the connector clips onto this bracket here. So what you do is you pull back on this tab right here and then pull it off. Then you could just squeeze this tab right here and pull these connectors apart. Now that it's disconnected, let me move this back away. I can test spin the fan here and hear that? This is our culprit right here. And to prove that, now that I've disconnected that fan, I can just turn the vehicle on. This fan won't run, and this fan will run, so I'll know that this is the issue. But I can already tell that this is what's making our noise right here. But let's just test it. And the noise is gone. While the radiator fan was the main issue here, the condenser fan, which you hear running, didn't sound too good either. And of course, to test this fan, same process. Disconnect the connector or remove the negative battery terminal because you don't want the fan turning on on you and spin it. While the bearings felt fine, I didn't like the sound the fan was making when it was running, so I decided to replace it. So the first step is to remove this AC bracket here, two 10 millimeter bolts. Get the 
coolant overflow bottle out of the way. I'm just going to take it and put it over that direction there. Take the bracket, flip it up, and out of the way. Remove these two fasteners here and here. And there are two more fasteners at the bottom that you need to remove. Now, I've seen people do all kinds of strange things, like even go as far as to remove the entire radiator. You know, remove the upper and lower radiator hose, remove the tranny cooler lines, and pull out the whole radiator just to get at those two fasteners. When all you have to do is jack the vehicle up, remove the splash shield, and you have access to those two bolts. And those two bolts you don't need to take out all the way. So you just loosen those two bolts up, and then you can pull the fan right up and out through the front here. So this plastic piece here is the lower splash shield. To get it off, you have to remove a few fasteners and trim clips. Under the front bumper, there's one here. One in the center right here. And one down at the end right here. There are two more fasteners up by the driver's side tire. Now there's just two clips holding it in. What I like to do to release these is get a pocket screwdriver, put it underneath. So just pry down with your pocket screwdriver and turn it counterclockwise until you have it like this. You can see. And once it's out a little bit, you could just pry it down the rest of the way. Like that. And you should be able to just pull the whole center out and you can pull down on the splash shield and the clip will release. So put that fastener back in there. Just another one of those over here. Again, insert a screwdriver. Ooh, this one's actually a little loose. Is this one even in? Well, this one's broken, so I don't even need to do that one. Now, there's one more trim clip all the way on the passenger side but I don't remove it because I don't fully remove the splash shield. What I do is I pull it down like this and then just fold it off to the side rather than remove it entirely. But if you want to remove that final clip and do that, that's perfectly fine. So I'll just bring it down and then I can take it and just fold it over like this. And it's pretty much out of my way. And here is the underside of the radiator. And these are the fasteners, one here and one here that I saw people actually removing the entire radiator for. Now as you can see the radiator fan shroud is slotted so just loosen these bolts up, no need to completely remove them. Now you won't be able to get these out with a standard socket wrench, just use a box end wrench. These are 10 millimeter. Hopefully they're not so badly rusted, they don't want to come out. Now if you're having a problem where they're binding up, just turn them clockwise and then counterclockwise and that'll help break up the rust. If a bolt binds up when you're removing it, never force it. You may be tempted to just, you know, mm, get, put a little bit into it and force it, but that's when you'll usually either strip it or twist the head off. What you want to do in that situation is work it back and forth. And if you can, get a little bit of penetrating oil in it, but this is actually pretty loose, so that's not a problem. 
Remember, don't remove it entirely, just loosen it by a few turns because this is slotted and the fan will just slide right past it when it's loose. Okay, and then there's this one here. It's pretty obvious which ones are the ones you want to remove because you can see the slot in the radiator fan shroud. Don't remove the other fasteners. They're for the uh, tranny cooler lines. I have to turn your wrench the other way to get at this one. There's barely enough room, but just enough to get in there. That. And hopefully on yours, these aren't badly rusted. These are pretty rusty, but they came out surprisingly easily. Now we can pull the radiator fan out. One thing to be aware of when you're sliding the new shroud in, as you can see, there's a metal bracket here. This is for the tranny cooler lines. You want the fan shroud to slide in behind this metal bracket here. You don't want this metal bracket up against the radiator here. You want it. You want radiator, fan shroud, then bracket. The other side here, there's nothing else on there, so you don't really have to worry about that. Let me just move this out of the way. Now to remove the fan, you simply pull it up and out, but unfortunately the upper radiator hose is in the way. Now I don't want to drain the entire radiator. I want to minimize the coolant loss. So what I'm going to do, put a catch pan underneath. I'm going to pull off the hose from the radiator side. Then I'm going to pitch it up. So I minimize the loss of coolant from the engine. I'm just going to let the radiator drain to this level right here. And that'll allow me to get the fan out. Got a drain pan underneath. Remove this plastic clip here. Holding the upper hose to the AC line. I just break the bond between the hose and the rad. You'll hear like a crack when you do it, so just try twisting it. I just did and here's where it's about to get real messy unfortunately because this hose is blocking the radiator fan so I want to get the coolant bottle out towards the front of the vehicle obviously or the hose will be in my way I'm just gonna pull the hose off real quick pull the fan out and then I'll reverse that process when I put the new fan in. So I want to minimize the coolant loss here. And the reason why I'm not opening the drain, the petcock at the bottom of the radiator is, especially with old radiators, sometimes they may, they may break. And that's not something you want to have to deal with. So I try to avoid using those whenever possible. Engaging it from those fasteners on the bottom. And then it can come out. You may have to push the AC lines back a little bit. I'm holding this hose up so that coolant doesn't drain out of the engine. Coolant's at right about this level in the hose right now. Be very careful around the AC lines. You don't want to be too rough with them, but you can just you know push them out of the way a little. They are rubber. When you're working around AC lines, especially when you're like pushing on them and stuff, make sure to wear safety glasses. If they were to burst, it's unlikely, but if they were, you want to protect your eyes. It also may help if you have a piece of wire or bungee cord to hold the hose out of the way, so you could do this two-handed. Again, the hoses are rubber, so you can bend them out of the way. Just don't be too violent with them, you know? Don't bend them too hard. There we go. I'm going to quickly put this hose back in so we don't lose any more coolant. Some will spill out. And there's the fan. In addition to tying the hose up and out of the way, I also could have pinched off the upper radiator hose, but I didn't have my hose pinch pliers handy. You can also use a set of vice grips, but be sure to wrap the jaws with duct tape to prevent damage to the hose. Here's a look at the fan. I'll just spin it. 
out of the vehicle so you can listen to it. The bearings in that motor are done. I disassembled this motor and show the internal damage in another video. I'll put a link to it at the end of the video and in the description. So start off, take this tab and push it towards the shroud here, then push the whole connector down and just squeeze this tab here and pull the connectors apart. millimeter here, 10 millimeter here. There's also a bracket that holds a bunch of relays. That's what this thing is in the front here. Just take the relay bracket right here and just lay it off to the side. And for this one, there's only one bolt underneath holding it in place. And yes, yeah, just like the radiator fan, it's slotted, so you don't have to remove it all the way. And here's that fastener right down here. And like the other one, box end wrench only, 10 millimeter. Just loosen it up. a few turns. Now over here you'll see there's another connector that's clipped on to the shroud. This is to your AC compressor clutch. You don't have to disconnect the connector, just unclip it from the shroud. So right here you'll see a tab. Right there, see that? Pull that tab in this direction and just pull it right off the shroud. Maybe stuck on there because the shroud's rusty. off. Don't have to disconnect the connector, just unclip it from the shroud. Make sure your relay bracket here is out of the way. And then you can just pull the fan up and out. So as you pull this up, come in contact with the AC line here, so just push it back a little bit. And this fan easily comes out without having to mess around with the cooling system. As you can see here, the condenser fans on these vehicles have a uh, metal shroud, while the radiator fan has a plastic one. And this is in pretty rough shape. You can see the paint's just flaking off. I'll just give it a little spin here so you can listen to it. It's normal for the condenser fan motor to be a bit noisier than the radiator fan motor when spun by hand. Here's where the condenser fan goes, and you want to put the slotted portion of the shroud right behind that bolt there. And here's the radiator fan side. You want to insert the slotted portion of the shroud behind that bolt there, and behind that bolt and that bracket not much to it. You can see the bottom of the shroud has the slotted end here. So you want to slide that behind the bolt. As you're bringing it down, just gently push back the AC high pressure line. Then you can reinstall the two fasteners up here. Just align the shroud so that the bolt holes line up. Now don't tighten that fastener first because you have to move the shroud up and down and align it in order to get these fasteners in up top. Leave it loose. Now get the relay bracket here. Place that front of the shroud like this, insert the fastener through, just 
very easy to forget that, and then you'll have that flapping in the breeze. And just tighten up the two upper fasteners. I don't need to make them super tight because it does go into the plastic radiator side tank here. So I'm just using a quarter inch ratchet, so I'm just limiting the torque that way. And snug up the fastener underneath. Again, no need to make it super tight, just snug it up. Before you reattach the power connector for the fan, don't forget to reclip the AC clutch connector onto the shroud. You can see there's a clip down there for it. Just insert it on there, push it down until it clicks, like that. Finally, reconnect this connector for the fan motor. For the new fan, I'm just going to get a clean shop rag and put it over the end of the radiator so I'm not dripping coolant onto the new fan. I didn't care about that when I was removing the old one, obviously. Just gonna wad it up and put it in there to the radiator. That way I don't need to worry about that. Dripping all over the place. I have to pull back on the AC line a bit to get the stuff to clear. There we go, I'm in. There we go, I'm in, right there, right now. It's not leaking as much anymore. I just use that to absorb up any excess. That's clear, so now I can just quickly reinstall this hose. Put that out of the way temporarily. I can reinstall the two upper fasteners. Again, don't tighten the lower one first because that gives you the ability to wiggle this back and forth so you can align the top fasteners. Okay, let's get this hose put back on the rest of the way. That and just slide the clamp back on. With a spring clamp like this, it'll leave indentations in the hose where it used to be. It's pretty important that you put it back right over those indentations so that it seals properly because occasionally if you just put the clamp wherever you feel like, it may not seal. Set those two fasteners up. Again, no need to overdo it. 
Yeah, until they're snapped. Over here is pretty simple. Just slide the slotted portion of the shroud behind the bolt here. Over here is a few more things here. You want to slide the fan shroud behind this metal bracket here. And then you have your bolt here. So you have the bolt, the metal bracket, the fan shroud, and the radiator. So snug it up. A bit tight but there's just enough room. There we go. And that one is a little bit more accessible. Now since the splash shield is off, you can connect the fan from down here. Sorry, I'm blocking your light, but it's real tight quarters here. I'm just going to press the two connectors together. Let's put that plastic clamp back on. And swing the C bracket back down. Make sure the uh, coolant bottle goes over it and not under it. The coolant bottle back in there. Okay, so before I go any further and I put the splash shield back on, I'm just going to turn the key on and run the fans. Sounds good. Now one thing I always check after replacing a cooling fan is I carefully put my hand here while it's running and feel for airflow. And the reason for that is these are DC motors. Okay? So if the two wires that go to them were swapped in the connector, and I have seen this before with door lock actuators, the motor will run in reverse. So instead of air blowing out this way, it will blow out towards the front this way. And the problem with that, of course, is think about when you're driving down the road, air is naturally coming in through the grill and going this way. If the fan is turning in the opposite direction, it's actually opposing that natural airflow as you're driving, and you don't want that. In addition to that, these blades are directional. So when the fan's turning in the opposite direction, it doesn't move as much air. The radiator fan's good. And the condenser fan's good the hose between these two tabs here. And I could just fold the splash shield back. Slide the tabs underneath the underside of the bumper. that. I like to push the splash shield up and install this fastener here. That way I don't have it coming back down on me. 
leave all the fasteners loose until you get them all in. Make sure all three of these tabs are underneath the bumper. This one here, this one here, and this one here. And install the bolts. for now. I was also able to find some new trim clips because one of them was broken and the other one was in pretty rough shape. These things are a lot easier to install than remove. Just pull the fastener out. Push them in the hole. Like that. Then just get a screwdriver and push the screw all the way in. Sorry about that, took two hands to push that in, but now that piece is in there solid and your splash shield won't be flapping in the breeze. Same thing here. Now these new ones take a surprising amount of force to uh, put in there, but just take your screwdriver, place it on the fastener and just push it until the fastener goes all the way in to the body of the clip here and just snug up all the fasteners. And as you can see, we really didn't lose that much coolant with this method. It's right at the level of the fins there. So that's right about at the level of where that aluminum piece is. And you can see that's right below the level of the coolant hose, which we removed. So I'm just going to top off the radiator. And just to be safe, I'll leave the cap off and I'll bleed the system. I already have another video on how to do that. It probably could bleed itself, but I'm just doing it to be safe and to make sure that the radiator fans come on when the vehicle comes up to temperature.